Hello and welcome to worship. I'm Bob Nearing, one of the lay ministers. Pastor Hugo is off this weekend following his uh, mom's funeral. We keep Pastor and his family in our prayers. In Pastor Hugo's absence, we are grateful to welcome back Pastor Keith Brutlog to lead our worship this weekend. And thank for being with us, Pastor B. Our latest share session of Grief Share began this past Wednesday. It's a 12-week session, and classes meet from 6.30 to 8.30 each Wednesday. If you or someone you know would benefit from attending Grief Share, please contact Sarah Kretschmann via the church office to register. The meetings are currently happening in person, but will move to online if situations change. Brenda is looking for volunteers to help with children's ministries on both Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings this fall. Contact Brenda in the church office to see how you can help. We want to invite all of you to our fall kickoff to the new discipleship year, which will happen next Sunday, September 13th. Our theme is Reboot, Refresh, Reset, Renew. We are doing things a little differently this year. We'll be worshiping in our church parking lot and not at the park. Bring your own lawn chair, but we will have some available if you forget. We are not able to provide a picnic lunch due to COVID restrictions, but please bring your own picnic lunch. We will enjoy lunch and socially distance fellowship with each other. Service will be at 10 a.m. on Sunday and online. There will not be a Saturday worship. As part of our kickoff, you will receive a copy of Red Letter Challenge, which is a 40-day program we will be following for the start of the year. Copies of the book will be available at church after next weekend as well. We are asking for your help in covering the cost of the books. Each book costs around $20. Offering envelopes are included with the invitation letters sent out this past week if you are able to assist. And thank you for that. That's all of our announcements. For now, please bow your heads and Pastor B will begin our worship with prayer. Well, good evening, church. Say today, uh, the gospel lesson is, uh, is really a gem. And it fits uh, the St. Matthew theme of, uh, of being known by love and live by faith and be a voice of uh, hope. We'll try to, try to spin that all together with, uh, under the question of who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Yeah, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Three things that pop out of that, and uh, we're going to touch all of them and... Uh, Ask God to uh, use it in a way that uh, sets this congregation uh, up for whatever's coming at us to be able to be a voice of hope among the people with whom God has placed us. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for that perfect life, that innocent death, that glorious resurrection for our salvation. Thank you that you come to us and that you give us a living, saving faith. And that you move in and through us in a way that you use us, each according to our giftedness, in a way that encourages and seeks and extends oneself into, into the lives of other people for the sake of your kingdom on earth as it can be lived in heaven. To that end, bless our worshiping this evening, our singing, our reading, our hearing, our listening, our speaking, to the glory of your holy name, we pray it. God's people say, Amen. Our worship begins the way our lives in Christ begin in baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit is no deceit. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. call me to worship you through a life to, of service, to serve you in caring for the vulnerable, the lost, and the sinner. Forgive me when I do not make such service a priority. Restore me and work through me to be an agent of spiritual encouragement in this world in which you have placed me. In Jesus' name, amen. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my mighty witness. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not let the Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. And God's good news is that Jesus is the good shepherd who at great cost to him, himself has sought each one of us out through his perfect life and his innocent death and his glorious resurrection to forgive us all of our sins. It is the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses us from all sin. It is my duty, my pleasure, and my delight as your sermon in the Word this evening to announce that grace to you and in his name, in his place, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God's people say, Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, mold our will to your will. Make us your servants to care for the vulnerable, the lost, and the guilty among us, to lead them by love by grace, through faith, for works of service. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now through all eternity. Amen. Good evening to you and good morning to those that are watching online. Uh, it's, it's fall, I, one of my, fa it's my favorite season of the year. I love the cooler weather. I love to wear sweatshirts and sweaters. I love the crispness in the air. It's fall and as I went to the grocery store this morning, not only is it fall, but um, as commercial things do, they're pushing the season a little bit. There's Halloween stuff out already. There are pumpkins in the grocery store. There is candy, bags of candy, ready for you to purchase to hand out to trick-or-treaters. Masks can be fun. This year we've been wearing a lot more masks than usual. Um, I'm boring at home. We have a lot of black ones and white ones like this to wear. They're not particularly fun, but I've seen some fun ones. I've seen some that look like SpongeBob square pants on the face, right? I've seen some that look like lions and tigers on their faces. Masks can be fun. I've got some masks at home that I want to show you this morning, this evening. Oh, my pretty, would you like an apple from my basket? <laughs> okay, that one freaks me out. <laughs> Leave that there for a second. We've got another one here. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Mask, mask can be fun. And when you put on a mask, you sometimes um, take on the, per, per the person that the mask shows you. Like if you put on a lion mask, I'm sure you go growl and growl at somebody. Okay? I put on an Elvis mask and suddenly I've got Elvis coming out of my mouth. I put on a, a creepy old lady mask and, and then I'm talking like a creepy old lady. Sometimes we wear masks and we, we act like the mask is showing us. But sometimes when we're dealing with people and we're talking to people, we kind of wear masks too. Or maybe it's, it's not so much a mask that we're, we're hiding and we turn our back away from people who have made us angry, who have irritated us, people we don't want to talk to because maybe they said something that wasn't quite nice. I don't think that's the kind of masks that God wants us to be wearing. Instead, when we have people in our lives that have made us mad or have made us angry, or maybe we've done something to make somebody else mad, and that's embarrassing, and we want to hide, and we want to turn away, and we want to put on a mask so they can't see who we really are. Maybe who we should be thinking about and putting on is Jesus. And when we talk to somebody, use the words Jesus would want us to use. Loving words, kind words, words that say, I'm sorry, words that say, you are forgiven. Take off whatever ugly mask you may have been wearing and let people see Jesus through you. Can you say a prayer with me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus please, help me please help me to do everything I can to show your love to the people around me. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you. 
The Old Testament lesson is from the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak, and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways, that wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn them to warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. The word of the Lord. Lord the epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 13. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority at which, except that which God established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you'll be, rec you'll be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And then he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come but woe to the person through whom they come. If your hand or your foot 
causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go and look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, Truly, I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated.
those words. Thank you. Isn't it beautiful? So pointed. In this uh, gospel lesson, Jesus is on his way from the Mount of Transfiguration to Jerusalem. He will be presenting his perfect life to an innocent death on the cross, rise from the dead for the forgiveness of the whole human race. Along the way, his disciples are, are walking with him and uh, they are um, having their own thoughts about this journey. As they were leaving the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, they were arguing who was the greatest. And that's on the, that is their agenda, these six months from, trans, from Transfiguration to the cross. And the last eruption of their arguing actually happens right after the celebration of the First Lord's Supper in the upper room. So it's not surprising that along the way, uh, with this on their mind, they would ask Jesus, uh, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And what a teachable moment. Jesus takes a child, puts a child in, right in, uh, in the middle of them all, and it says, truly I say to you, unless you turn Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And who, and who humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I doubt that's what the disciples were wanting to hear. Rather, they were probably wanting to hear, well, of course you are. But Jesus says, turn. That word is used in the Old Testament with a whole idea of uh, di disciples, there are some things that you need to repent about. And this is one of them. And let's see if we can clear your head. I want you to turn, repent, and become like this little child. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Become like a child, vulnerable, powerless, whoever humbles himself. In the biblical sense, this is what this means, is being fully and confidently, confidently dependent upon the Lord. And then Jesus strings three stories together, like pearls on a string, which talk about who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He said the greatest in the kingdom of heaven are the little. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven are the lost. And the greatest in the kingdom of heaven are the guilty. And he speaks about that. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven are the little. The Old Testament talked about that. The Levitical codes said to Israel, take special care for the vulnerable and the powerless. We call the, he, they were listed there as the orphan, the fatherless, the poor, and the sojourner who has taken up residence in your midst. Jesus himself exemplifies that as he went about with his disciples with the towns and villages healing people, announcing the kingdom of heaven, repent and believe the, the good news, touching the lepers and healing them, healing the sojourner centurion's son, healing those who were ill, casting out demons. And then he says to his di disciples, using some rather strong, strong language, don't put stumbling blocks in front of the vulnerable and the powerless. They live in a world in which stumbling blocks are before them all the time. 
There's a better way. There's a better way. And that's not to look down upon those who are powerless, who are vulnerable, upon the widow, the fatherless, the poor, the marginalized, the outcasts. Jesus says, these are the people I wish to touch through you, to be known by love, to live by faith, faith, and which to be a voice of hope. And then he moves, and he talks about the lost. Now, in Luke chapter 15, it begins with words like this. Now, the tax collectors and the sinners were coming to Jesus to hear his teaching. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law murmured and complained, this eats with sinners. They wouldn't even say Jesus' name. They were so abhorred by Jesus himself. They hated him so much. This spends time with the outcast. But here Jesus uses interesting language. To his, he's speaking to his disciples. He's speaking through the disciples to people who are part of the church. And he says, uh, what do you think? The man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray. Does he not need, leave the 99 on the mountains and go and search for the one who went astray? That's like, uh, it's, it's asking for what kind of a response? Yes. And you can almost see the disciples say, yes, yes. The cognitive dissonance of that. And then he says, and if he finds it, this is risky business. If he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than the 99 that never went astray. Logic, huh? So it will be, it is not the will of my Father in heaven that not one of the little ones the vulnerable and the powerless should perish. I don't know how many times I've taught on uh, this parable, and I doubt that there has been any time when someone has not asked the question, what about the 99? Because there is a sense that this is irresponsible behavior to, to leave 99 vulnerable, unattended someplace and then go after one. And someone was really challenged with this uh, question one time. And this was his answer. And I love it. By going after the one, Jesus gave the 99 boundless security in that each of them knew, if I get lost, he will come for me. Yes. The failure to go after the one would leave those same 99 with the ultimate insecurity of realizing, if I get lost, he'll let me die. Yes, there was a risk involved, but undeserved, costly love was given to the one and thereby greatly assured the many. I like that. I wish it was my original, but I'm not that smart. But it is a great answer, is it not? Comforting to know that if I go astray, Someone out here is going to hunt me down. 
we have security on that. And this is how they're going to hunt me down. Here's a, a, I got this quote from one of the commentaries, so I, I need to read it to you. Just as God, <clears throat> the good shepherd, seeks the lost sheep with costly love, so Jesus commits the disciple to that seeking love among the fellowship of believers. Began this whole story with speaking about those who are vulnerable, those who are powerless, and how we are not to put stumbling blocks in front of them, but to be spiritual, physical, uh, emotional encouragers to them, showing a different approach from that which the uh, world gives. And if one of those vulnerable ones goes astray, Take uh, the example of Jesus as the good shepherd to search that person out. And Jesus is instilling in his church, in you, in me, that seeking mindset. And then he outlines this three-stage process. Go tell him between you and him alone. This is not a judgment mission. This is the whole idea of one sinner coming to another and say, brother, we need to walk together. And I can't walk this road to life. I can't walk it without you. I can't walk it without you. I'm looking at people who are my encouragers along this way. And if one of you goes astray, I've lost a partner. If I go astray, you've lost a partner. And the seeker in you, or the seeker in me, will seek one another out so that we can have the assurance right now that I will never, ever be let alone on my walk through this life. Somebody's going to be there with me. Jesus' concern always was that every sinner, every sinner, beginning with me, the one going astray, has the intense love of a church that just wraps itself around one another. And that virtue of divine forgiveness is, is, is in the church's DNA. Never judgment, but always and only forgiveness. To be known by love, that kind of love. To live by faith. And to be a voice of seeking hope to one another and presenting this to the world that desperately needs to have a model of seeking, of bringing back and restoring to the right relationship with a gracious God. Now, we are living in rather interesting times. Uh, w many people are uh, ready to get rid of 2020, but then we have 2021. And we have no idea what 2021 is. And we are in the midst of a whole bunch of things happening. We have COVID, so we are here with masks. And boy, I would like to read your lips and see your face and see a, a, a smile. and. And we're here with uh, dealing with all sorts of, of unrest. We have no idea. So this afternoon, I, I Googled impact of the lockdown. And then endless. And you've probably done the very same thing. Uh, my search tended to weigh 
on the side that uh, the impact of the lockdown, the emotional, the physical, the social, the economic, and the medical impact of the lockdown is going to be greater than the virus itself. It's a signal to the church to get ready. Opportunity for a whole lot of uh, seeking. But then many of you are experiencing that personally somehow in your life. The spiritual, the emotional, the physical impact of the lockdown and what that's done for someone you care about a great deal. And you're living it and you're supporting it. And how can the church support that with you? Because we want more than just having a motto, a theme of being known by love, lived by faith, being a voice of hope. But we want that hanging on our action, in our action and on our, our journey wherever we go day by day. Jesus said it this way, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also must love one another. Encouraging the vulnerable, the powerless. Seeking the vulnerable and the powerless. Having the DNA of bringing forgiveness, not judgment, to the powerless and the vulnerable. By this will all people know that you are my disciples because, because your thinking, your speaking, and your actions want you to be known by love, to live by faith, and be that voice of hope to the world in which God has placed us. These are really exciting times. Wouldn't you agree? And they are times of opportunity. And we're going to have them. And let's get ready for what God brings our way. Grace, peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We say, Amen. As you are able, I'd ask you to rise for the, uh, as we profess our Christian faith, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy, the Holy Christian Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'll have you be seated for the prayers. In our prayers today, um, this is, the, this is Labor Day weekend. We'll have a prayer specifically for that. In our prayers, we again remember the Hugo family. Uh, their mom uh, is with the Lord, and uh, their funeral was, I believe, Tuesday. Uh, we lift up Rose Davis. Uh, Kathy Rosenberg indicated that she's uh, in a, a better place and able to have Conversations, and that was a, a good email to uh, to read. Uh, pray for Dan and Nelson, my friend Michael, and then um, former office manager Ruth Peterson, her husband Dave, our grandparents. As of Friday, um, and uh, Leon Austin Abbott born to their daughter, Marie and Brandon. So there's some happy people 
and we are happy with that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Bless us, Lord, with humility, gentleness, and wisdom to speak your truth with such love that others seek the forgiveness, mercy, and reconciliation and life that comes through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear the prayers of your faithful people who suffer persecution, torture, even death because of Christ. Grant them grace to persevere in faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. Give wisdom to those entrusted with worldly power and authority to accomplish your will for the good of all people. Teach us to settle our differences peacefully and to act honorably and speak respectfully and live justly. Lord, in your mercy. Guide those in the military and law enforcement to be servants of your will, to bring safety, freedom, and justice, to snuff out evil, that peace may grow and flourish, Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the blessing of honest labor and industry, for those working in trades and crafts and caring professions, for artists and artisans, for farmers and all those engaged in the work that brings food to our tables for all small business owners and corporate board executives and all, for all who use their gifts in ways that bring joy and satisfaction for the public good. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life to Brandon Leon Austin. We celebrate with that whole family and we give you thanks and we ask, Lord, that you bless mother and father and grandmother and grandfather and that baby in your gracious care. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to you those whose lives are shadowed by suffering and grieving. We again remember the Hugo family and uh, we give you thanks that they can grieve as people having lasting, confident hope. We lift up Rose to you and Dana and Michael. We would ask for healing, Lord. Grant them health, hope, guidance, and joy in your presence in their lives, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your little ones who, have, who, having died to this world, now live eternally in your, in your embrace. And until we approach that day, keep us as your humble servants, confidently encouraging, seeking, and forgiving one another for the sake of your kingdom on earth as it will be lived in heaven. And as you have taught us, we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I need to make sure that all of you have... have that. Our Lord Jesus, the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. The same way also the cup, saying to his disciples, This is my blood poured out for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take and drink the blood of Christ. And now may the body and blood of your Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. As we depart in his peace and live in his joy, we pray. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you for coming to us vulnerable and powerless people and giving us new life through your life and death and resurrection. Thank you for seeking us and pursuing us and bringing us back. Thank you for coming to us in this holy meal 
coming to us so that you can forgive us and then restore us to that life of being known by love, to live by faith, and to be that voice of hope in this world in which you have placed us. We give you thanks, Lord, for you are good and your mercy lasts forever. Amen. And be in the word. Just be in the word. Read it. Learn it. Mark it. Inwardly digest it. Eat it up. To the glory of God's holy name and our work of service as God's people. As you are able, rise for the blessing, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you with his favor and give you peace. God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you.